And now, here's Happy Caldwell. Hello and welcome to our broadcast. We began a message last week that I taught at the Agape Church Spring Celebration several years ago. The title of the message is called Faith Versus Fear. Do you know what the enemy of faith is? It's fear. Fear steals your ability to stand in faith if you let it. Fear does not belong to you. Do you want to know how to get rid of your fears? Then stay tuned for today's message. But before we get into God's Word, Jeannie's going to minister to you in song, a powerful message. If you need deliverance or healing, let the Word in song minister to you as Jeannie sings, Fire. In Jesus' name. Jerusalem was shaken, Pentecost had arrived, an upper room party, they were drunk on the new wine. Peter stood among them, he knew there was no doubt, this Holy Ghost fire would make you want to shout. Fire, shut up in my bones, in my bones. Holy Ghost fire, fire, shut up in my bones, it's just like fire. Prophesy. The prophet Jeremiah would lift his voice and cry. Be silent, folks demanded, go holy bus alone. But how can you be silent when there's fire in your bones? Fire! Shut up in my bones. Holy Ghost fire! Shut up in my bones. Just like fire. Dead men resurrected and ran back to his home. When telling folks a story, you could hear him say, I found that holy fire in a dead man's grave. Fire, shut up in my bones. Holy Ghost fire, shut up in my bones. Just like fire, shut up in my bones. moving about. Don't tell me to be quiet, nor sit down in my pew. Cause if you feel what I feel, you'd be shouting too. Fire, shut up in my bones. Holy Ghost fire, shut up in my bones. Just like fire, shut up in my bones. Holy Ghost fire, shut up in my bones. Shut up in my bones. Holy Ghost fire. Shut up in my bones. Just like fire. Shut up in my bones. Holy Ghost fire. Holy Ghost fire. Holy Ghost fire. Shut up in my bones. Shut up in my, shut up in my, shut up in my bones. Yeah. Art welcome in this place. Her beautiful voice is unforgettable. Thou art welcome in this place. Her inspirational songs are timeless. He's a healing Jesus. He's a healing Jesus. For years, audiences have cherished the music of Jeannie Caldwell. From I'm a Believer to The Anointing Every song makes you feel in His presence. Stand your ground in the Lord. 
Best loved hits, hidden classics, all found on Genie, Colors, and The Peaceable Kingdom. CDs you'll treasure forever. Buy yours today wherever the products of Happy and Genie Caldwell are sold. And now, here's Pastor Caldwell with today's message. Luke chapter 21, but I wanted to just give you those remarks about faith, a little of our history, because this is why we have celebration every year. Luke 21, verse 25. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and the stars and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity, the seas and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. So we know he's not talking about the rapture here. We know he's talking about the second coming of Christ. The rapture of the church takes place before the second coming. Now that's if you believe in a pre-trib rapture. And if you don't believe in a pre-trib, if you believe you're going to tribulate, then have it your way. <laughs> but the Bible teaches, I believe, a pre-tribulation rapture. The church is going to be raptured and caught up. Amen. Then, because in the rapture, the Bible plainly says that we'll meet him in the clouds in the air. We, we not, he's, you're not going to see him. He's not going to touch down, so to speak. But the second coming, they're going to see him. And it says here, they'll see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up, lift up your heads for your redemption draws nigh. Now notice what he says in verse 26. Now we have wars or rumors of wars going on right now. Jesus said those, are going, those things must come to pass. Those are the signs of the end of the age. And we're at the end of the church age, the end of the age of grace. So we know that we're going to see these things. But notice it says, men's hearts failing them for fear. Now I have for years, and I'll just admit it, you know, you, if you, you stay connected to God long enough and you live long enough, you'll have to admit that some of the things that you preached uh, maybe in the early days you might not have had all the revelation. And I always thought this men's hearts failing them for fear and have used it as an example to uh, scripturally substantiate in the last days uh, people would have heart attacks for fear. And fear certainly can cause you to have a heart attack. But that's not what this is talking about. And I was... I was rereading this the other day and I thought my goodness and the Lord began to reveal uh, something to me so this men's heart failing them for fear is not referring to a heart attack and I can prove it to you out of the scriptures because of defining the word in the Greek for heart it's not referring to a heart attack of your blood pump of the heart muscle but the spirit of man failing to produce faith. So let's read it that way. Men's hearts, men's spirits failing to produce faith because of fear. So let's look at this faith versus fear. Go to Luke 18. Luke chapter 18, verse 1 and verse 8. Luke 18, 1 and 8. And he spoke a parable unto them to this end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Galatians says, if you don't faint or give up, you'll reap in due season. Look at verse 8. I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, Shall he find faith on the earth? Now go over to Luke 22. Faith is important to God. Luke 22, verse 31. 
And the message of faith has been, you know, I, I, I think the critics, the criticizers that have criticized us in the, quote, faith movement, some probably have been justified because of people that had no revelation of faith whatsoever. They were just trying to mimic and imitate someone. And they brought reproach upon the word of faith. I attended an idea exchange down in Miami, Florida several years ago. And the way they held this idea exchange, they invite certain ministers to come so we could keep a dialogue amongst ourselves so nobody would misunderstand what the other one was teaching. And Buddy and Pat had asked us to go down there with them because Brother Hagen was invited and couldn't go, so Buddy went in his place. Now, sitting at this board, and I, don't, I realize we're in a different culture today, sitting across this front table was Derek Prince, and Don Basham, and um, the Fort Lauderdale Four, uh, if you know anything about that, the discipleship submission teachers. And uh, there were some major ministers there. And we were just observing. And the way it operated was they would field a question. Uh, Roy Harlan was there. That's Benny Hinn's father-in-law and uh, other ministers of that caliber. They would field a question about a certain teaching and the discipleship submission teaching was really getting some uh, criticism and bad press, and there were there was some room for criticism. It was it was controlling and and dominating, and so they were airing this so everybody could hear it. And you would ask a question, and then they would direct uh, the question to a certain panelist, and he would answer it. And so you would learn to um, hear what they were saying from their mouth instead of what somebody else said. And so they directed a question to Buddy because Brother Hagin wasn't there and said, we would like for you to explain to us about why we've seen so much craziness going on where faith is concerned. And Buddy very wisely said, well, I can't answer for Brother Hagin, but I, I can answer the question myself. And he did. And then they opened it up to the floor for anybody that wanted to, to comment. And so... Uh, the microphones were over here on this side and on this side. And I saw Derek Prince get up and walk up to the microphone. I thought, oh boy, this ought to be good. Because he's a very intelligent man. And uh, he walked up and they recognized him. And he said, you know, I suppose the faith camp has had the same misfortune that we that teach deliverance and discipleship have experienced. Because discipleship and deliverance in the Bible is true. It's there. Submission is there. But the way it was being taught by some was erroneous. It was an overreaching and it was controlling. And so Derek Prince says, I suppose faith has had the same problem that we've had in uh, deliverance and discipleship. He said, it's not so much our critics as it is our imitators. And boy, that was so powerful because there are people that are trying to imitate faith that have no revelation of it. They're just trying to imitate somebody else. So here you see that according to uh, the scripture in uh, Luke 22, verse 31, and the Lord said, Simon, behold, Satan has desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith fail not. Hmm. Your faith can fail. I gave this example one time, you remember it. If you have a uh, half-ton pickup truck and you go down to the gravel uh, place and tell them to put two tons of gravel on that half-ton truck, you're not going to get out of the gravel yard. You, you'll be doing good if your axles don't, you know, break. And some people try to overload their faith. They go to church week after week, but they don't apply anything they've learned. And so then when a crisis appears, they don't have the faith. They can't believe their way out of a wet paper bag because they have never believed God for anything in their life. And yet they've been imparted the measure of faith. According to the Bible, God has given every believer the measure of faith. But you have to develop it. Amen? 
So, according to this word, your faith can fail. Now, go over to Proverbs 4 and let's look and see about your spirit man. When you see this word heart, always translate it spirit because it's not the, the blood pump. That physical heart, all that is is a muscle. It's, it's, it's not, you don't believe God with your heart muscle. You believe God with your spirit so when you talk about heart, you've got to translate spirit. Men's spirits failing them for fear. It's not a, talking about a heart attack. Men's spirit, they're failing to produce faith because of fear. Now watch how the heart works. Spirit, Proverbs 4.20. My son, attend to my words, incline your ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life unto those that find them and health to their flesh. What is they referring to? His words. They, God's words, are life and health to your flesh. Keep your heart with all diligence. Now again, keep your what? Translate, keep your what? Your spirit. Keep your spirit with all diligence, for out of your spirit are the issues of life. So what comes into your spirit will eventually come out of your spirit through your mouth. It's what goes into your spirit that is important because your spirit is designed by God to reproduce whatever is sown into it. We can see this from the parables of the sower. So you have to be careful. He said, keep your spirit with all diligence. For out of your spirit, you've you got to be careful what you hear. Because what goes into your spirit is what's going to come out of your mouth. Uh, go over to Matthew 12 and you can see this. Matthew chapter 12. And listen to... Verse 34, the last part of the verse, out of the abundance of the Spirit, translate, every time we see heart, translate, out of the abundance of the Spirit, the mouth speaks. A good man out of the good treasure of the Spirit brings forth good things. An evil man out of the evil treasure brings forth evil things. Go to Mark chapter 4, and let's look at this parable of the sower and go to verse 14 Mark 4 14 the sower soweth the word what's being sown the word these are they by the wayside where the word is sown but when they've heard Satan comes immediately to take away the word that was sown in their spirit because Satan could care less about you he's after that word He's after the getting the word out of you or preventing it from going into your spirit because he knows what that word will do. Jesus cut him every which way from Sunday in the, in the wilderness when he tempted him. Uh, and G every time Jesus re responded back to him with the word. He said, if you're the son of God, command these stones to be made bread. He said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. If you check that out, it came from Deuteronomy. All three of his answers to Satan in the wilderness came from the book of Deuteronomy. So what did Jesus defeat Satan with? The Word. The Word is incorruptible seed. It's powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. And in, in the Word is life and health to your flesh. When I was a young Christian, <laughs> and, I'd, and I'd have symptoms of sickness trying to come on me, I'd just go get the Word. And I took that literally. When it said the word is life and health, and I just put it on my head. If I had a headache, if I had, I'd put it on my stomach. I'd put it on my body parts that needed healing. And God honored that for a while. <laughs> then he required me to learn uh, what he was actually talking about was not putting this physical book 
on my body, but putting the words in my spirit. Okay. In Matthew 13, we see um, a little change of the language. Matthew 13, verse 9. Matthew chapter 13, verse 9. Who hath ears to hear? Let him hear. Now go over to verses 12. For whosoever hath, to him shall be given. He shall have more abundance, but whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken away, even that he hath. When I was studying that early on in my Christian life, I didn't understand that. I thought, that's not fair, Lord. Uh, you're, you're taking away from people that don't have anything to give to the people that have. I mean, that doesn't sound like you. That's not fair. That's, that's, that sounds like Uncle Sam. <laughs> you seen the bumper sticker? The Lord giveth and Uncle Sam takes away. <laughs> so I couldn't figure this out until I realized I had to go back to verse 9 and realize what he was talking about. Who hath ears to hear? Let him hear. Now, with that in mind, insert it into verse 12. For whosoever has ears to hear, to him shall be given, and he'll have more. But whosoever has not ears to hear, from him shall be taken away even that what he has. Now, go down to verse 18. Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and understands it not, then comes the wicked one and catches away that which was sown in his spirit. This is he which receives seed by the wayside. So when you don't understand something, Satan comes to steal it away so it can't get in your spirit. Because if it gets in your spirit... It's going to germinate, and you're going, to, you're going to start growing. How many of you know when you get something from God, when you've got revelation, and man, it just, it, it, it's kind of like, whoa, I got it. Jumps off the page. That's when you have the revelation, and that's when you're going to see the results. Amen. Now, let's go to Romans 10, verse 17. I've already quoted this, but let's look at it so you'll have a reference in your Bible. Romans 10, 17. So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Faith doesn't come by praying. I've had people ask me, say, would you pray that I have more faith? You can't, you can't do that. You can't pray for people to have more faith. Faith does not grow or come by faith. Prayer, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. The more you hear it, the more faith comes. The more revelation you have of the Word. Now, let me, let me go back to my original statement, Luke 21. Men's hearts is not referring to a heart attack. It's not referring to the physical blood pump muscle at all. But the spirit of man that is failing to produce faith. Now let's go to 2 Timothy chapter 1 and let's look at fear. Have you ever been afeared? Have you ever been afraid? Well, we all have at one time or another. And we say dumb things that we've been programmed with. I tell you, that just scared me to death. I tell you what, I laughed so hard I thought I'd die. But you can't die from laughing. The Bible says just the opposite. The Bible says laughter doeth good like a medicine. So you're going to have to change it. I laughed so hard I thought I'd live forever. <laughs> that just, that, once you get a revelation and we, we taught a lesson on this, the miracle working power of the spoken word, you'll start taking a look at what you, what you say. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. 
Hallelujah. Now that you know how to use your faith, rebuke the spirit of fear and move on forward in the things of God. We receive hundreds of prayer requests each month here at VTM. And Jeannie and I, along with the staff, pray over them. And an overwhelming number of these requests are for the restoration of family relationships. I want to offer you encouragement as we stand in agreement with you over your relationships. Whatever you're dealing with right now, child, parents, siblings, I want to pray for you. Father, I pray for you to heal all the families that are watching right now. Heal parent and child relationships. Heal sibling relationships. I pray for peace to come into that home and into that family. In Jesus' name, amen. We're here to stand in agreement with you and pray for you. If you have a prayer request or a praise report of any kind that you want to share with me, then email it to me. Happy Caldwell at vtntv.com. You can also call 1-800-264-2525 to send you in your prayer request, and uh, we'd love to hear from you. Now, I want you, I want you to watch this next uh, uh, product offer. It's for Believer's Authority. If you don't know your authority as a believer, you need this book. Watch this. From the beginning of creation to the ministry of Jesus and throughout the church age, no message has been more revolutionary, life-changing, or misunderstood than that of the believer's authority. Pastor Happy Caldwell has tackled this complex teaching in his new book and spirit-led Bible study, Believer's Authority. In this powerful duo, he reveals how you, a believer in Christ, can use your own kingdom authority to release God's healing power, set captives free from Satan's snares, overcome the spirits of fear, depression, and poverty, and perform miracles in the mighty name of Jesus. To order your very own Believer's Authority book and Bible study, call toll-free 1-800-264-2525. The book is just $14.99, and the Bible study is only $19.99. The spiritual battle is real, but through these powerful, time-tested scriptural principles, you can be a victor instead of a victim. Be sure to join Jeannie and me next week at this same time, same station. And remember, happy is the man that finds wisdom and the man that gets understanding. You can watch today's show online. Simply log on to vtntv.com and click Happy Caldwell. If you'd like to order today's broadcast on DVD, you may call 1-800-264-2525 and ask for the offer number on the screen. To contact this ministry, you may write to Happy Caldwell at P.O. Box 26207, Little Rock, Arkansas, 72221. You may also call us at 501-223-2525. And be sure to visit us online at vtntv.com.